So I just want to say, you know, we, we couldn't do it without the patients, we couldn't do it without the presenters, but we definitely couldn't do it without our volunteers. And you've already met some of them, I'm sure. Uh, Vaheen Vupalanchi, Dr. V's son. Sai Chalasani is Dr. Chalasani's son. Justin and Benjamin Wieniger is Regina Weber's son. So thank you guys, you guys did a tremendous job. So again, Regina, uh, I don't know if we can publish this, but I don't know if this is the most fiber skins done in a weekend. Um, so really amazing work, and I, I just want to applaud her. She, she did a tremendous job. There were a lot of behind the scenes things to get this done for this weekend, and so she, just, she was amazing. So the Hilton Table volunteers, thank you for doing that. I think it's an important part to come into Indianapolis and, and meet people like yourself and meet AIH patients. Um, so thank you for doing that. And, and really, family and friends, I, the reason we had Doug Goldberg here to talk about the caregivers, I just think it is so incredibly important. And I, every week goes by that I found a patient that my husband doesn't get it, my mom doesn't get it. And so if there's anything we can do to kind of help with that, and you being here today is a testament. So patients, maybe we should applaud the caregivers that came with us. And then obviously my executive board, and I, I'm gonna include Indiana University, they have been a champion of this organization and they get it. And Dr. Chalasani, my boss, gets it. Um, my board gets it. And I'll be honest with you, Sharon Gordon, Lisa Devereaux, uh, Linda, JC, uh, and Luke, the patients that are on it, you were on social media before we came. You guys knew this was important. All you needed was just a, a little bump. And I think uh, we were able to get a physical support group. And again, I think we are for the better for this because this is a tremendous need as we have highlighted. So again, my board, thank you. The work you've done has been unbelievable. And Lori, thank you. He, she's a new addition to the board. Her silent auction was phenomenal. So thank you, guys. Brianne McGee is my study coordinator. She replaced Josh Love. I think this was all probably a, a new face, but she has done a tremendous job in coordinating this conference. Um, you know, she doesn't get paid extra for being here. She's here out of passion. I have to tell you the same thing about Regina. Holly King is my nurse, kind of my right-hand woman. She would love for me to tell you um, that I couldn't be a doctor without her. I, I'm probably <laughs> true. Um, she sees me at my worst and when I'm not a perfect gentleman, but she puts up with me anyway. <laughs> So thank you, both of them. Also, the other research team members that gave their time this weekend just to support data collection and blood draw in the back, all of our research nurses. Guys, thank you so much. All of our expert presenters, again, just phenomenal jobs. I hope you feel like you've left with a better roadmap of this disease. And it's really, unfortunately, up to you to bring this back to your physicians. Integrate it into your care and really use this information to your best ability. We will provide all this information in a few months online. You can watch the lectures again. Um, but again, the point of this is to give this away for free, that you can use this, and your doctors can even use it if they have questions. So in, fi in kind of final uh, comments, we know it's rare, but it, it really affects a lot of people worldwide. You know, the complexity of AIH, you know, I, the genetics of this we don't understand, the environment we don't understand, but we think it is so important. And really to, to, to go for these needs and, and to try to bridge these gaps, we're gonna need the patients, but we need to really look at a number of things. Again, I've talked about individualized therapy, trying to understand disease progression, looking at symptoms outside, outside the liver, because again, the quality of life factors are so incredibly important. I wanna just shy, highlight one thing that we did yesterday because I want you to see in real time what patients that attended this conference look like on paper. This is a questionnaire that we did through the Hub to Cure app. And essentially we were looking at factors such as fatigue. So I'm gonna show you here that 27% of our conference, those that actually participated, 27% had significant fatigue and actually all the time fatigue in the past two weeks. That's pretty dramatic, let alone 50% has it, which is hard to see, a good bit of the time. So again, this is the Achilles heel. We need to understand this better and we need to try to find approaches to treat this better as well. How do you feel, or I'm sorry, how, how often during the day do you feel sleepy? Well, surprise, surprise, much of the time is 
Some of the time, it's split three ways, so this is substantial. How about anxious? We see anxiety and mood disorders prevalent in AIH. We see up to 30% of patients all of the time. Talk about a drop in quality of life. Sleeping at night, we know sleep is intimately connected with fatigue. It's intimately collect, connected with this disease, obviously, too, because about 20% have sleeping all the time problems, also a good bit of the time. And just a few more here. I thought this was interesting. How about worried about the impact of your liver disease on your family? 20% all of the time, and some of the time and a good bit of the time. So again, caregivers, I think you digest that information. The patients think about this too. So again, thank you for all that you do. Finally, depression. It's substantial, but interestingly, we actually have a pretty good firm base here. But there's still a significant number of patients, at least over 20% have it some of the time. So please, you have to integrate these, these, these possibilities with your doctor. And how do you approach them? How do you treat them adequately? I'm going to leave you with something that's probably directed more for the people in the Northeast. But I, I, I think we should take a Springsteenian approach to AIH. And what does that even mean? What does that even mean? So you have to have a hungry heart. And that means you have to play your part. As a patient, you must be involved using resources like the AIHA, but also integrating the other care models and things like Curable with Lisa Boyette. We need to motivate patients to be able to participate, but we also have to provide them the conduit. This is the Badlands, and you have to live it every day, but it's really, you have to keep your head up. And again, things will change in the next five, 10 years, I'm hopeful. New therapies and better ways of treating this disease. Autoimmune disease patients, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I don't know if anybody knows this Springsteen song, tougher than the rest. I'll be honest with you, autoimmune patients are tough. They are tougher than any other patients I see. They're also the most proactive and most prolific, interesting as well. I've shared with you the idea of the phenotype. I have very few patients that contribute nothing to society. And it's something about the type A, I'm sorry guys, but pro professional woman that gets these diseases, at least PBC and AIH. So again, I, I think there's something to be had there. Glory days, we are going to catch up and we will have our glory day, but we must catch up and we're probably 10 to 15 years roughly behind PBC and PSC, so we have a long way to go. And finally, you can't start a fire without a spark. And we're hopeful that AIH is that spark for you. And even though it feels like we are dancing in the dark. So thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming.